Hi, my name is Paul Seal from codeshare.co.uk and in this video what I'm going to do is show you how to create a contact form using the default site that you can install when you install Umbrico you can get one of the packages which is basically a starter kit, the one called Fano. If you've seen any of my previous videos you'll see that I use that for these tutorials and the first video I did was showing you how to install it so if you haven't done so or you don't have a site already that you're working on then you might want to go back and watch that video to do it. So you're going to end up with a, an, a form on the contact page which you can send an email from and hit submit and it will be a working contact form. This is what we're going to cover in this video. So we're going to create a new contact template and contact document type which will be associated with the contact template. We'll then create a model to receive the data from the template. We'll create a controller with a method to render the form and also add a method to the controller to submit the form and with that as well we'll create a method for sending an email. Then we're going to create a partial view for the contact form and we're going to add all the fields from the model onto the partial view form. We're going to add the form to the contact template. We're going to create a contact page using that contact document type We'll test that it works and fix any errors. And then I'm going to demonstrate Papercut as an application for testing emails. And then we're going to test that it works. First of all, we need to log into Umbrico. Then we need to go to the settings section and then open out templates. And then we have master, and then we've got blog overview, blog post, home, search, and text page. The search template is one that we already created and that was in one of my other videos. So at the same level as search, underneath master, if we click on the dots of master and then we create a new, a new template and we just want to call this template contact. Click on create. And for now that's going to do, so we'll hit save. Next we want to create the document type for this contact page. So if we go into settings again, document types, and then if we click on the three dots, do document type without a template because we've already created a template and we just enter the name contact and then we click the icon so we can choose a suitable icon so I think there's one for message then we want to associate the template with this, uh, with this document type so click on templates, choose default template and then we're going to choose contact then we'll hit save. Now we want to go to Visual Studio so we can create the model which will have all the fields that we want to collect the data for on the contact form. So if we open out the solution we've got the project install Umbrico, open that out and we want to create a new folder inside here by right clicking on the project click on add and then new folder and then type in the name models. Then inside models, click on the models, right click on models and do add new class. Just leave it as a class and then just call this contact model. Press enter. So it's created a class for us. It's got the namespace because of the uh, project name the models folder and then the class name. So inside here we just want to add some properties so we're going to do one for first name another one for last name one for the email address and another one for the message so these properties are all string variables um, what we also want to do as well is we want to say that all of these are required so if we use system dot 
component model dot data annotations we will then be able to above each one mark them as required these are validation attributes and another thing we can do whilst we're doing this oh uh, we've got a bug, uh, an error here because it's expecting a semicolon at the end of my using statement so another thing we can do is put email address on this one so that will validate the field that has been input as a, an email address and if it's not a correct email address it will actually throw an error to the user on the form so we've got the model set up now, first name, last name, email address and message. Next we're going to create a controller which will have the methods on it to render the form and to submit the form. So first of all we need to right click on the project, click on add and then new folder and then enter the name controllers. And then right click on the controllers folder, do add class and we want to add we want to call it a surface controller so we're going to call it contact surface controller so that's created the class for us and what we want to make sure we do is we want to use ombreco.web.mvc and that will allow us to inherit this class from the surface controller. So that's what we do with our controllers in Umbrico. So that's created the controller class. Now we want to add a couple of methods on here. So we want to also use system.web.mvc. Now the first method we're going to create is going to return an action result and we're going to call it render form and what we're going to return is a partial view and this will have the path of the partial view that we're going to um, that's going to house the form in it so for now I'm just going to put in the name of this partial view that we're going to create later what I like to do is be direct with the exact routing of my partial views because I like to organize them inside folders so I'm going to create a, a constant and it's going to be of a string type and I'm just going to call it partial view folder so this will give it the path to the exact folder of where this partial view is going to be so it will be in views, partials, contact now I'm going to use that in here when I'm calling it to render my partial view it's going to look in this folder and it's this file that I want it to render. Next we're going to create another action result and this one will submit the form. And in order to submit the form successfully what we need to do is do a check to see if the form was valid. So if we do if model state dot is valid. So if it is valid, then we'll perform some logic inside there. And if it isn't valid, then we're going to return the current Umbrico page. And if our logic completes properly, we're going to return redirect to current Umbrico page. So that will do the post back. Later on I'll show you how to do it as an Ajax form submit so we would change these later down the line.
So if this is valid, then we're going to send an email. So what I like to do is, you can do this in a helper class or you can do this in here and for ease of this demo I'm going to show you this within the controller class. So I'm going to create a private void called send email and that's going to accept the model. So that will be install umbraco.models contact model I'm going to add the namespace install number code models at the top because I'm going to use that a couple of times in this class I'm also going to need this inside the submit form as well because this has got to receive the model and then it's got to pass it to the send email. So I'm going to, from here I'm going to call send email with the model inside it and I'm only going to call that because I know that it's valid and after it's done that I'm going to return it to the current Umbraco page. So inside send email We'll just write some quick logic that we use system.net.mail to send an email. So using system.net.mail. So inside this send email method, so I'm going to create a mail message. Message equals new mail message. And in this I've got four different overloaded constructors. So I'm going to choose the one where I can just enter the from and to. So the from is going to be from the website. And it's actually, as this is a contact form, it's going to go, it's going to basically say it's from the website to the website. But what we could do, because this isn't actually real, we could just do model.email address. So say it's from the person who submitted the form and then it's going to go to the website at install umbraco.web.local. So whichever the admin email address for the website that you're working on. So that's where that's going to go to. And you could have this set up in your config settings and on on my site, codeshare.co.uk, it shows you different ways to be able to do that as well. But for now, it's going to be hard coded in here. I don't normally hard code in my, I usually have it in some sort of settings. So for the message, we want to add a subject. So message.subject equals <coughs> string. I do lowercase string these days. String.format inquiry. From and I'm going to set this up so that I can pass in the first name and surname. And I'm probably also just going to include their email address in the subject as well. So we've got a new message, the subject, so it's going to be from the person who filled out the form to the website administrator address and the subject is going to be inquiry from the first name surname dash email address and then the body of this email is going to have the message that is inside the model, model.message. So now I need to configure the SMTP client. So client equals new SMTP client. And I want to give it the host name, which is basically localhost 127.0.0.1 and then port 25. 
and I'll show you an application called Papercut which will let you see these emails even if you don't have an SMTP server on your machine. Then it's just the case of writing client dot send and then put the message in there. And that should do a basic email for you, sending the email of the details that were passed in from the model. Now we need to create a partial view that will contain the form and that partial view we will call from the contact template. So first of all, let's create a new partial view and we want to put it in a contact folder because up here we said that that's where this partial view was going to be. So views, partials, contacts. So under partials, right, well, right click on partials, do add new folder and then type contact. And the form is going to be called underscore contact. So if I do right click on contact folder, add view. And we want to create it as a partial view. So we tick this here, make sure it's ticked. And then we put the name of the view in here, so underscore contact, and then click on add. Then we will be presented with an empty partial view. So what we need to do is do at inherit umbraco view page. And then in the angled brackets, we need to pass in what model this is going to use. So this will be the contact model. So that'll be install umbraco dot models dot contact model. Close that angle bracket. So now that will let us create the form and add all the fields in there. So to create the form, we need to do at using HTML begin on Brico form. We need to tell it what the method is for submitting the form. So this will be submit form and let's just check this surface controller for that so this will be submit form here and the surface controller name which is contact surface controller now with these you always miss off the word controller so we just put in the name up to controller so contact surface and then we do some open and closed uh, curly braces so we have our form and what that will do is on the front end it will actually just generate some HTML form tags for you with the relevant action in there. So if we actually also, we can also put a comma and do form method post. So inside this we want to create the fields and the way we do that with MVC is do at HTML dot textbox for and then we use link to get to the field the model properties so m dot first name so we've got a text box for the first name what I'm also going to do as well is do the label for as well so label for m represents the model dot first name. So I've got a label and a text box for the first name. I'm going to copy that and do and just change it to be last name and email address and then finally one for the message. So I'll just replace these. I've got something wrong with um, my IntelliSense for some reason. I don't understand what it's doing or why it's being buggy, but it gives me the option and then when I try to use it, it disappears or leaves empty spaces in. So just ignore that. Hopefully your environment will be a lot better. Just going to put these fields in. So for the message one, we want that to be a text area rather than a text box. And we want to use the 
validate anti-forgery as well. So if we just do at HTML anti-forgery token there, and then in the controller, if we on the post submit form, first of all we decorate it with HTTP post, and we also decorate it with validate anti-forgery token. That means that people can't just post to your form without actually being on the site and it validates from the form. It's got a token on the form and, it, and a token that it expects on the server side. So it's to basically prevent hacking or uh, false attempts at submitting your form. <clears throat> so we've got that on there. Um, that should now create the HTML form for us. Oh, one thing we do need is a button to submit the form. So if I just quickly just put a button on there. Um, for now, that can be it. We just need something to submit the form. Another thing we can add to the form is the validation summary. So we put that up there. So if there are any errors when we try to submit the form, it will show them in the validation summary. You can, I'll just show you this, but we won't use it on this. You can, under each field, do HTML.validationMessage4 and then use the same as above with the link m goes to m.firstName. So that will do an individual message for that field, but what I'm doing for this example is just having all of the error messages in one summary. So to use this form on the template, the contact template that we created, what we need to do is go into the template. We, first of all, we need to make sure that it's included in the project so you get the recognition of the markup. So if I right click, include in project, close the file and come back in, now we've got the proper syntax highlighting. So it's using the master layout and then just, I'm gonna do a div class equals container just to keep it into the middle of the page. And then I'm just going to get it to render an action. So I'll just need to do at um, curly braces and then HTML dot render action. And the action I want it to render is the form. So I'll do render form. So that is calling from the contact service controller render form here. And I need to put the name of the surface controller in again. So I do contact surface, missing off the word controller again. Now we need to create the contact page in Umbrico. So we need to go to the home node and click on the three dots and choose contact. Now before we do that, as you might have noticed on the front end, there's already a page called contact. It is just one of the landing page document types and for the purpose of this demo, what I'm going to do is delete this page. Okay. And I did that by going to actions and delete. By clicking on the page first, actions, delete. So I've deleted the contact page that they created and I want to create my own. So because we gave permission for this underneath the home page earlier on in the tutorial, what we can now do is click on the three dots of home, choose contact, and then enter a name of contact, and then hit save and publish. And what it's done is it's by default it's picked the contact template because that was the one that was associated with it and there was only one. So we now have the contact page created. Now that we've created our contact page, let's see if it runs. So we'll just click on link to document. As you can see, we've got a yellow screen of death. So we've got an error here. It's not recognizing the root. So I don't think we've done a build. So if we just go into the solution, do build rebuild solution, that should create the controller class and the model and everything and compile it so that the website can actually understand it and see it because 
at the moment all we've been doing was creating these items but we did need to build it first so if we go back again and then hit refresh or F5 you can see now that we've got a form on the page it doesn't look pretty uh, we can do more about the styling of it but this is mainly to show you the functionality on how you can create a form yourself so we've got a form first name last name email address so if we just fill this in so we fill the form in and now we just hit submit no connection could be made because it couldn't get through to this so we've got this error now because it doesn't like going through the 127001 so this is where a tool called papercut comes in and you can find that on Codeplex. Uh, I think it's papercut.codeplex.com. And you can download it from here and install it. I've already got it installed. And what you have to do is you just have to start that running. And once you've started it running, you will see. So this is now running. So what it does is it picks up any of these that you send through on the local host 127001 on port 25. So if we now go back to the page and go back and then try and submit again, now that it's running it should allow it to go through. So what it did, it submitted the form, we now have a blank page, a blank form again, so we didn't have any errors, it, it got to the point where it redirected to current page which is here, Re return redirect to current page. So let's have a look in Papercut to see if we actually received an email. So here we go. Inquiry from Paul Seal, test.test.co.uk. And it's to website at installumbraco.web.local. This was the date when it was sent. And the subject was inquiry from Paul Seal dash test.test.co.uk. And then the message has got the actual message that I put in the message box. So it wasn't really a good user experience when the page just reloaded with a blank form again. So one thing you can do if you, if you do want to work with postbacks like that, you can just add something when it is successful. You can add something to temp data. So if we do um, above the redirect current Umbraco page, if we put temp data and do contact in speech marks, contact success so this is just giving this temp data a name so contact success and then if we set that to equal true then we can look for that on the template to decide whether we need to show the form again or whether we need to show your that your email was sent successfully so if we go to the template then when this loads we can look for this now so if I do an if temp data and then the string contact success equal uh, is not equal to null and it converts to a boolean value that is true then show a message that just says your message was sent successfully otherwise show the form again so now that we have this inside the else statement we don't need to put it inside these brackets and that symbol of its own we just we do need to end that with a um, semicolon so if we save that and go back to the for so if we save all do a build go back to the website refresh the page and then fill in the details again And then hit submit. What you can see there, 
your message was sent successfully and down here you're getting a notification from Papercut to tell you you've got a new email. So if we go into Papercut we can see this other email here and uh, you can see that the form is actually working so it's submitting, it's sending an email and you're, you're able to view that in Papercut even though you don't have an SMTP server on your machine. So the form doesn't look very pretty so what we can do is tidy up the form by putting some other markup around it that Bootstrap understands. So if we do form, uh, sorry, uh, div class equals form group, if we wrap these around all of all of the elements on here and do it again. It will just tidy it up a little bit and also what I'm going to do is do the column system. So div class col, for now I'm just going to do xs6 so that I can have like a 50-50 split with the label and the field. So if I copy that and paste it again and then I'll put the label one side and the field the next. And actually, I'm going to do a three and a nine. So one quarter of the so one quarter of it will be taken up by the label, and then two thirds, uh, two, three quarters will be taken up by the text box. So for quickness, I'm just going to copy this and paste it three times, and then just replace the values where necessary. So we've done last name, email address, and then message. Remembering to do text area on the message one. Then I can delete these here. If I save that, and then I'll go and refresh the page. So now I've refreshed the page and it's looking a lot nicer. Obviously there's more that you can do to make it look nice, but this will do for now. So another test, testing at test.co.uk, another test, email, and hit submit. Your message was sent successfully. Get the email, come through to Papercut. So that proves that it's working for you. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and also subscribe to my channel. Feel free to comment, ask any questions if you want to. I'll try and help you out. Uh, you might benefit from the next video, which is going to be showing you how to do this using Ajax. So it uses JavaScript to post the form and get the result from that post to whether it was successful or not. So look out for that. Um, please feel free to share the video with your friends or colleagues. And I look forward to speaking to you again.